Tell me if this sounds at all familiar. After months of scouring online stores, setting up restock notifications and joining Discord groups, only to still miss out on the latest and greatest GPUs from AMD and Nvidia, a new card is announced. It might not be the one you wanted, but the price seems good enough. You have the release date, you know the time it's launching, you're ready to snatch one up as soon as it goes live. Launch time arrives. You refresh the page of your retailers of choice. You refresh again and again. Minutes pass, still no stock. You spam refresh until your finger goes numb. And finally, your IP gets blocked for suspicious activity. And by the time you switch on a VPN, they've sold out. Man. For someone whose channel is mainly graphics card reviews in the time of scalping, it's probably a bit hypocritical of me to whine about GPU availability. I haven't completely escaped the disappointment myself though, so I can appreciate how other people are feeling. Hence the rather passionate title of this video series, in which I'll be testing out some of the better integrated graphics on the market in 2021 for those who are simply done with graphics cards this year. The part I'm looking at today is technically a Ryzen 5 Pro 3400GE, a 35W version of the standard 65W 3400G that isn't generally available on sale. I acquired mine in a micro form factor office PC from Lenovo, a video about which is linked above. However, running on an MSI B450 Mortar Max motherboard effectively ignores the 35 watt limit and essentially overclocks itself to an all core speed of 4 GHz. By then manually increasing the clocks on the integrated Vega 11 GPU to 1400 MHz, the whole CPU is essentially identical to a stock 3400G. Also, while I was getting busy with the BIOS, I tried some more manual overclocking. Sadly, my 3000 speed Corsair Vengeance topped out at just 3200. Uh, I settled on the default 4 GHz speed on the CPU and 1650 MHz on the GPU. Starting with the absolute mess that is Warzone and at 67% of 1080, approximately 1280 by 720, and minimum quality settings, averages were a surprisingly playable 56 FPS. I'm still not a fan of running battle royales at low resolutions, but if you turn off filmic AA, you should at least be able to see vaguely what you're shooting at. Curiously, the overclock had little effect on the scores, actually having a slight negative impact on both averages and minimums. I tested Fortnite at 1080 competitive settings and saw just shy of a 60fps average with 30fps 1% lows. The 250MHz overclock to the GPU did have an effect this time, but only returns about 7.5% higher averages. 1% lows were almost 50% higher, but as per usual it should be pointed out that smoothness of gameplay on a Fortnite server isn't always down to your computer. Apex Legends at 1080 lowest settings gave me an average FPS of 39 and 1% lows of 26. Although I found this fairly playable, I did find in my review of the ASRock X300 that it was possible to get almost 70 FPS from this CPU by dropping resolution to 720. What didn't seem to help was overclocking. Maybe the RAM was the limiting factor here, but we're talking about a slight drop to averages and slight bump to minimums. Nothing worth getting excited about. Running Enlisted at 1080 with the medium preset, I saw 30 FPS on average both in stock and overclocked GPU configurations. Once again, I'm GPU limited, so dropping quality to low or resolution to 1600x900 or 1280x720 should be viable options for those looking for smoother frame rates. I find it intensely difficult to see enemies in this game, and dropping to lower resolutions would be an exercise in futility for me. Cyberpunk was the first title to actually show an increase in FPS more than 10% from overclocking. Running at 720 medium settings, stock GPU clocks of 1400MHz brought an average of 32 FPS, 
whereas increasing the Vega 11 cores to 1650MHz saw that jump to over 36, though in both cases frame pacing is erratic and sees 1% lows drop into the teens. While running Horizon Zero Dawn at 720 original settings actually gives a slightly lower average FPS than Cyberpunk, the more even frame pacing makes it feel much smoother. Stop Clock saw an average just shy of 30 FPS and 1% lows of 26. Overclocking the GPU, again, does very little to help, averages raised by just over 1 FPS. I think this might be the lowest end hardware I've tested Watch Dogs Legion on so far, as most cards I've tested at this performance level aren't DirectX 12 compatible. The canned benchmark shows a very clear one frame improvement going from stock to overclocked, with the unplayable average of 26 FPS climbing to a smooth as butter 27 FPS. I may have been a bit over optimistic, aiming for 1080 low, and 720 would certainly iron out some of the issues with frame pacing. Another canned benchmark here in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and another low spec rarity. This time 1080 low was too much, with the benchmark runs suffering major stuttering, but dropping to 720 gave a pretty smooth experience overall. Averages held at 43, with 1% lows only dropping as far as 33. Overclocking the GPU saw that average climb only as high as 46. Considering the last few discrete GPUs I've tested in Doom Eternal have all been Kepler based cards, getting playable frame rates from integrated graphics was pretty surprising. Running at 1080 lows saw an average of 41 and 1% lows in the high 20s. Sub 30 frame rates harm the experience quite a lot here, so I recommend running at a resolution of 900 or 720, or overclocking if that's an option. Averages from the overclocked run increase to 44 and lows stay in the mid 30s. Resident Evil Village is another game that doesn't handle sub 30 FPS frame rates well, especially during cutscenes where audio and animation quickly become desynchronized. In that regard, I found it best to play at 1080 with the prioritized performance preset, which defaults to interlaced rendering. I understand this means essentially running at 1920 by 540. It doesn't seem to harm visual fidelity much and, at least in my testing, helps guarantee a high enough FPS to make cutscenes run correctly. Overclocking, however, does precisely bugger all. As I write this, the Euros are apparently going on, so of course everybody's mind turns to football. Mine, however, turns to the considerably more beautiful game of Rocket League. Surprisingly, the high quality preset actually worked out pretty well here, but as I prefer to play this game with over 60 FPS where possible, I dropped one notch down to quality, resulting in an average of 65 FPS. Overclocking the GPU, once more, does nothing. Forza Horizon 4's canned benchmark was playing silly buggers with this one. Without the overclock, it refused to report back averages or lows, only giving out a rounded out figure of 43 FPS. Overclocking the iGPU, and now the rounded out figure is blank, but the detailed stats are visible. Weird. Anyway, 1080 medium settings should keep things playable, and in my eyes, is virtually identical to high settings. The overclock, again, does essentially nothing. I didn't quite have the necessary stuff to fully max out the 3400G here. A more experienced overclocker might have managed to eke some more performance from the chip, and if I had better RAM, I might have seen more benefit from the overclock I did achieve. However, I think that might be missing the point. For the frustrated gamer who just wants to start playing some modern PC games while they wait for the scalper pandemic to pass, looking at the asking price on eBay for this chip right now, I think this generation of AMD APUs might be a bit overhyped. Here at the end of June 2021, the asking price for a 3400G is over £180 on eBay. I know you're over graphics cards and this might not be what you want to hear, but for that price, you could get hold of a £100 Ryzen 5 2600 and a used GPU quite easily. 
Granted, there are no 100% great graphics cards for £80 right now, thanks for ending driver support at the worst possible time you guys, but even a GT 1030 or RX 460, and let's be clear, these are not good deals, even one of these overpriced and underpowered cards should offer better value than this APU. And then, once things return to normal, that 6-core CPU will get a great deal more out of a new graphics card than the 3400G would. Hope that's been useful. Keep an eye out in the coming weeks as I'm hoping to look at the Ryzen 3 4350G again to see how that does in the same games. Kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.